Hey everybody, welcome to Review A Day, episode number 153. I am Leland Brungart, and thank you for being here. Uh, quick, whoops, that's the cell phone, as you guys probably know by now. Uh, quick scheduling little uh, update. Just want to talk about some of the flicks I'm going to be seeing in the next couple, in the next week or so. I'm going to be catching 500 Days of Summer with Zoe Deschanel and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, my buddy Aaron over at The Daily Review here on YouTube, youtube.com slash Durden85. Check him out. Uh, he already reviewed it. He loved it, I believe. I'm excited to see it. And I'm also going to be checking out The Hurt Locker, which I'm, I've heard nothing but amazing things about. And I'm also going to be checking out I Love You, Beth Cooper, because I love movies about high school. I can't, uh, I can't knock these flicks. Can't hardly wait. Anybody? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, maybe it's just me. Uh, but the flick I'm going to be reviewing for you guys today is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And this is actually the sixth film in the Harry Potter franchise. It seems like it just began. Uh, this film is directed by David Yates. I'm not sure if he did... Uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, he did Order of the Phoenix. Uh, so this is his... He's directing up until the final one. Uh, the guy does a pretty good job. This film, of course, stars Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter. Um, you've got Jim Broadbent in this one playing the new professor... You've got uh, Alan Rickman as Snape, who I always really, really enjoy in these films. Um, Emma Watson. And who's the kid? Rupert Grint plays uh, Ron Weasley. And I just kind of wanted to get his name out of the way. But uh, in this flick, Harry finds a new potions book uh, that used to belong to the Half-Blood Prince. And through this book, he starts learning some more dark things about uh, Voldemort's history. Whatever. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a lot of... I don't have a strong connection with Harry Potter, a way a lot of people do. I mean, it's one of the few things that I am not absolutely nerdy about. I mean, pretty much everything I like, I'm just an absolute nerd about. And Harry Potter is something that I, I don't ha I don't have any ill feelings toward it. It's not like with Twilight where everyone loves it and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like Harry Potter, I enjoy. I just I just don't love it the way a, a lot of people really seem to do. So I, I tend to go into these Harry Potter films with no expectations whatsoever. I really don't know what to expect. I don't really... I'm not worried about not enjoying it. But uh, for the most part, I've enjoyed the Harry Potter movies. I think they're all good to at least pretty good. Um, and the Half-Blood Princess newest film was probably... It is probably my favorite one that I've seen of them all. I think one thing that I noticed about this film that I really kind of enjoyed uh, was it seems to have a little bit of a sense of humor. This one had a lot to do with love potions and kind of silly magic stuff like that that is funny and, and is a lot of fun to watch I thought especially someone who I don't have a deep emotional connection to a lot of these characters it's it's nice to see something kind of silly and fun uh the problem that I've always had with the Harry Potter movies I can't really speak for the books because I've only read the first three but I always felt like Harry Potter was kind of one of the weakest characters in the uh in the franchise, I also feel like uh, Hermione is a bit of a weak character. I think Emma Watson is, isn't a great actress. I think she's kind of uh, awkward at times. But I also think the character in the film that she's playing is incredibly underwritten and kind of boring. Uh, in these flicks, I always tend to just enjoy watching Rupert Grint as, as Ron. He's kind of Xander and Willow uh, rolled up into one character. And he's really a lot of fun to watch. He's funny. He's got a sense of humor. I also really pretty much love Jim Broadbent and about anything. Um, the special effects are a lot of fun to watch in this movie. I thought there's enough in Harry Potter that there's that magic side to it. With You just want to see someone do cool stuff with a, with a wand. You want to see cool potions and stuff like that. One of my favorite things in this film uh, was in the trailer. It's, it's the bit when uh, they're, they're looking into the memories of people and... When they pour the memory and it kind of dilutes through the water and then you put your face in. And then in the memory, everything is kind of diluting and coming into existence like it's in underwater. And it's just like a really cool kind of uh, special effect. You know, I, I don't think this is a great movie. I, I did really enjoy it, though. I think especially considering some of the crap we've been seeing this summer. Uh, Harry Potter is probably one of the better films you'll see. Uh, I gave Harry Potter, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince a three and a half out of five. I really think you can do, uh, you really can't do any worse. I mean, I liked this a lot more than I liked Public Enemies. I liked it more than I liked Bruno. Um, if you're a Harry Potter fan, I don't see how you could really be disappointed with it. I'm gonna bite my tongue though, so tell me what you guys think. If you guys liked this review, make sure to head over to nitpicket.com. That's 
N-I-T-P-I-C-K-E-T.com. Also, make sure to rate and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.